Hi, hello, and welcome to the show. I'm Ravon Smith. Good to have you with us for our Cape Racing podcast preview of the race day that we've all been looking forward to. The Mother City's flagship race meeting has always been the most sought after and prestigious social event to attend because of its proud legacy and rich heritage that includes top quality racing, live entertainment, and fabulous fashion. Having said that, from the most ardent of form studiers to those coming racing for the first time, the question on everyone's lips wherever you go is, who is going to win the World Sports Betting Cape Town Met? Now, unless you have a crystal ball or tomorrow's newspaper today, that question will only be answered when they flash past the post just after 10 past five on Saturday afternoon, but more about my selection a little bit later on. Racing fans can also look forward to no less than a 12 race program that gets underway at the stroke of the noon gun. The other big attraction, of course, on the day is the carryover pick six, with an estimated pool of 10 million rand. It starts in race four, and you need to be on by 13.50. And these will be the races that we'll be concentrating on in this podcast. Race four, the first leg of the pick six, is the Whirlpool's pinnacle stakes over 1,400 meters. Now, normally for a race of this nature, I would look at the highest rated, best weighted, state my case and move on. However, this race doesn't have that luxury. It certainly has a very wide open look about it. And in order to survive the opening leg of the pick six, I suggest you put in as many as the budget allows and fingers crossed that your best possible result arrives. I'm including all of one Russian rock who over raced in the grade two premiers. He now drops back to 1400 meters. He certainly merits respect. Also number two, Silver Operator. He is unbeaten over the course and distance. He was the easy winner of his last start. Craig Zachary retains the ride and the manner in which he won that last start, he cannot be ignored. Four Warrior also needs to go in. He's having his third run after rest. I say put a line through his last run in the Lomar Queen's Plate as he was reported to be fatigued. He had good solid form prior to that last disappointing run and with Grant van Nickerk back on board must be included. Five Hyde Park is also going into my perm. He may have found 1600 a touch too far in his last start. He now drops back to his ideal trip. Samanka so Gamala retains the ride, and if he's allowed to go to the front and dictate the pace, he may be hard to peg back in the closing stages. And then at the bottom of the weights, I'm looking at number eight, Look for Hounds, who come in with a handy galloping mass of just 53 and a half kilos on his back. He's also four kilos better off at the weights with number nine, Bush Tracker, who won on Lomar Queen's Plate Day. That should be more than enough to turn the tables on these two, and he must go in. So I suggest you put in all of one, two, four, five, and eight, not to go out in the first leg of the pick six. As we turn the page, we look at race five. It doesn't get any easier. The city of Cape Town summer juvenile stakes listed over 1,000 meters. And this certainly is a very, very competitive renewal of the summer juvenile stakes. You need to approach it with caution, as a case can literally be made for each and every one of them based on their performances to date thus far, and these two-year-olds also mature at different stages of their careers. Most ardent form studiers are taking no chances. They're going field. They're putting in the lot in the pick six. If you're wanting to narrow it down, let me share my fancies and selections with you in no particular order. Two Street Outlaw, he showed pace over the course and distance when winning on debut, and with natural improvement certainly has more to come. Four Pacific Green arrived with a big reputation. The first race on Lomar Queen's Plate Festival weekend was all the rage, was heavily backed and duly obliged. Certainly warrants respect on that performance. Eight Cousin Casey, three kilos bit off of the weights with number two street outlaw for just over a length beating. So that brings him right into the reckoning. Ten Pure Maverick is another one that's three kilos better off with number two street outlaw. He was bumped to the start in his last start and he also ran a good enough race, he attracted some late bidding support and now with Grand van Nikerk on board, he certainly is one for the shortlist. And lastly, number 11, we jamming. Close up in both starts, Richard Faree retains the ride. He's also three kilos bit off for the weights with number two street outlaw. And he does look like one that has upset potential in this lineup. A very tricky start to the jackpot, second leg of the pick six. As I say, load up with as many as you possibly can. Race six is the grade three Cape Racing Politician Stakes of 1800 meters, the official Derby trial. This race, I've narrowed down to just three runners. 
I'm going to include number one, Zapatillus, who finished fourth in the Grade 1 Cape Guineas last time out. And the manner in which he finished off that race certainly suggests that he will enjoy the extra furlong. He comes in with a big chance. Three Universal was extremely unlucky in the Grade 1 Cape Guineas. He had a check at a crucial stage in the race. He should have finished much closer on that day. He should have no problem with a step up in trip. He jumps from pole position and he's definitely in with a big chance here as well. And then I'm also going to include number six, Pakaya, who has always been highly thought of by his connections. He finished 3.8 lengths behind Jed Dark at the Grade 1 Lomar Queen's Plate last time out. He's bred to go the trip and another one with strong claims. So I'm including all of one, three and six in the third leg. It does appear that there are two potential bankers coming up in the next two races. The first one being number one Rio Karari in race seven, the Cape Flying Championship grade one over a thousand meters. Now he certainly caught the eye last time out in his seasonal debut in runner-up to Real Gone Kid. They were a new rivalry with Rio Karari three kilos better off of the weights for a head beating. He should strip much fitter. He was second in this race last year and all fingers are pointing in Rio Karari's direction to go one better here. So to me, he's a banker in race seven. The other potential bank on the card is number one Captain's Ransom in race eight. The Mallorca Stakes grade one over 1600 meters. She was a facile winner of this race as a three-year-old 12 months ago. Now, despite being drawn widest of all, she has regular pilot Richard Free on board. He knows her well and will be giving her every chance and assistance she needs. She's two from two over the course and distance. She's unbeaten this season. She comes back in trip and should continue about her winning ways. One captain's ransom, a banker race eight. On to the last leg we go, and that's the big one of the afternoon. The World Sports Betting Cape Town made grade one over 2,000 meters. And here my first choice in the race is the Lomar Queen's Plate runner-up. He's had the ideal prep coming into this race. He's having his third run off to rest. He's drawn on the paint and he's much better suited to the strip. He's also betting to become the first horse in a decade to win the July Met double. My first choice for this year's World Sports Betting Cape Town Met is number five, Komedi Deng. To me, he rates the one to beat. I suggest you add in your fancy and also include all the possible dangers with chances, the likes of four Jet Dark, 11 double superlative, six line back at 10 Marina. The winner of the race should come from one of those mentioned. With lots of carryovers, whirlpools to bet into, some of the country's best equine athletes competing, and fashion in full bloom on display. It promises to be a fascinating day's racing not to be missed. For more information on the event and to check if there are still tickets available, you can visit www.caperacing.co.za. Now, if you missed any of the selections while listening to the podcast, it's available on www.goalsandgallops.com. Click on and download this week's edition and there you'll find it all in print form. Trust you have your outfit sorted, your tickets to attend the Cape Town Met. I'm Ravon Smith and I look forward to seeing you at the races.